Long-term viewers on the channel will know of my love of these cars. The Skoda or Skoda Octavia is one of the better cars you can possibly buy on the road and has been for a number of years, just space-wise, because this Octavia is near as makes no difference, the same size as Superb now, so it is a big car. But this one's different. This one has a little secret, because under the bonnet of this is a one-liter, three-cylinder engine, and somewhere back there, there's a battery that runs the mild hybrid section of it. And arguably, if we all drove a mild hybrid, Hybrid, a PHEV, a hybrid, or a battery electric vehicle, we would lower our CO2 overall. Just saying, just saying, before you get upset about it not being a BVV and all that sort of stuff. This is a pretty good car. So tell you what, let's have a look at what it looks like on the outside first. So side profile wise, and apologies for the dirt, I literally have come, I know it's blue sky now, but we've just come out of a week of storms. That's what's been going on right now. And then driving up here this morning, the roads are just filthy as well. So, but look at the outside of it, look at the size of that thing. So look at your one, two, three, four, maybe even five meters, right? Um, and it's a big, big car now, really long car. Even the elongated bits on the doors here, this bit that sticks out as well, it's quite a good size of a car. We have a look at the inside in a minute. But coming around the front first, it does have that Skoda look, right? I'm not really gone on the plate here. I know what that is, but I'm not really gone on the plate being there. Just looks a bit odd right there, that sort of filled in point. Very aggressive looking stance to the front. Lots of lines you can see here. One, two, three, four, five, six lines across the front before we get there. And then coming around the side, the tires fill the wheel arches quite well. We'll come on to the suspension in a minute because suspension is probably its, maybe its weakest point. Uh, good long lines across the top of it here and then you come around to the most important part which is the back and the boot. Written on the back of the car it says E-Tech. It's the only illusion you've got. It says any sort of hybrid stuff going on at all. The word Skoda is now emblazoned across the back in big letters. And then Octavia down here as well. So if I pop the boot, you see why I'm talking about the boot? Look at the space, lads. So much room in here. You can have a dance in the back of this car. Look at, the, look at that. There's a shopping bag hook, a real one, look. That's not the only shopping bag hook. There's more than that shopping bag hook. I'm over this side, there's another one over here. There's one here as well. Uh, and there's one over here as well. So there's four shopping bag hooks just right here in the boot of the car, straight away. You can drop the back seats from here as well. Just pull that, seat disappears. Easy, easy, just one little pull of a handle. And if I pull up this thing here, it's got a spare wheel, woohoo, already built in. Not sure about the old step there, Skoda. Uh, that could be better done for flat, but I don't mind that so much. Tunnel cover completely covers in as well. Tons of room, proper practical boot. Just a big handle here to pull down, just pull that. And closes, not electric, done. Also got a rear wiper. Critically essential on a Skoda Octavia, the lift back version of it is, uh, is very important there. Now, we're gonna have a look on the inside, see what that's like, okay? Let's do this. Okay, interior hasn't really changed all that much, if I'm honest. Uh, not that much is going on in here. It's just the same sort of a layout. Now, these two vents are down low here. So this one blows air directly onto the top of your knee. See that there? Right there, if you don't, it just straight up. And if it's just straight up, it blows straight air straight into your face instead. So, I'm not sure of this moving the vents down the thing and moving stuff up. and It clears off the clutter at the top of the screen. This bit up here is nice and clean, but really it's just blowing air in a place you don't really want it to blow air. Uh, electronic dash is here in the middle as well. If I press it where there would be normally a keyhole, there's a button in these. You press that and it's all electronic apart from these, which are manual on the side. This is an actual fuel gauge over here, temperature gauge on that side. But the rest is electronic, so you can adjust screens somehow. There you go, so you can adjust those kind of screen things somehow. Yeah, there we go. It's doing it now, it's just catching up. Starting navigation, you see you can have a selection of screens there as you want. Over here you have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Mirror Link are all built in as standard. That's actually scrollable. It's a touch screen. Uh, it has a physical, sort of physical proper press area up here in the corner. Uh, navigation is built in on this as well. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, of course, are in it, so it's easy enough to do it. You also have two USB ports here at the front and a tray for sitting, it's not wireless charging, but a tray for sitting your phone into. That's the gear stick now, this thing. 
Uh, then there's cup holders here as well and electronic parking brake. You do get a very practical, good big glove box in it. And you get this fuzzy Alcantara top seat. And it's on the seats here as well. This cream interior is very, very nice. It won't wear well for families because that is Alcantara. That's not leather. There's a leather bit in the middle, but there's Alcantara on both sides. So blue jeans and stuff in here will stain that or change the color of that. One remarkable thing is that steering wheel with the bottom of it missing here. A lot of people look at that thing and go, where's the rest of it? But it's actually okay. It means you can put your hands anywhere. You don't touch anything here in the middle. It's quite nice. This has cruise control here as well and uh, auto lights and stuff down the corner that all work very well extra little bit in here from skoda as well is a little coin box or something you'd say that is plenty of room in the doors for your for your bottles it's a good very practical car it's as practical as it always has been even has a little sunglasses holder up here which is getting very very rare in cars these days see a sunglasses holder it's all very nice let's have a little look at the back seat because that's where skoda tends to win on signs So as you've seen a minute ago, I dropped the seats from back there, just dropped by pressing the button. They do just go back up by clicking back into place and they can drop them in here too. So there's a, there's a switch on both sides. <clears throat> uh, get in the back seat. I've made my seat fairly relaxed where I'm sitting on it. So you can see there's still plenty of room there easily. My wife sat in that seat the other night and that is uh, tons of room there. She's a bit shorter than I am. Then you have a document holder on here with a, a device holder. It's, listed like an iPad holder or something. It wouldn't, I don't think you fit an iPad in that. Then you have a bigger one above that again. So you've got two little holders here in the back. Two USB ports, both USB-C, and then no air control in the air, but you do have vents back here. And then you have big clunks. Hear that? Now do that again, just, just to prove the clunk is as good as an Audi. And that's a big, heavy clunk, like that. Really good. There is a armrest in the middle. A bit hard to get out and uh, it's that two cup ones and there's like a pen holder thing missing over as well you do have a ski loader ski, long item loader through as well everything's there and of course the seat drops in one touch easy peasy as always back seat skoda they work very very well extremely well now let's go for a spin see if there's one of their engines like the one thing I do like about Skoda is the space. There's always room in, the, in a Skoda. You never feel like you're cramped into a position or cramped into an area uh, within a Skoda range. So when you're driving one, it does feel like a good experience, like a luxury car. And this one does feel that way as well. Very easy to drive, very uh, easy DSG box. Everything feels just really well put together which is often a kind of a surprise for some people who don't believe that uh, Skodas are still well built, but they are really well built. I tell you now, without a shadow of a doubt, Skoda are some of the best built cars in the world. Now, whenever I drive one of these, I have to remind myself that what I'm driving is a one liter three cylinder because it just doesn't feel like a one liter three cylinder. The new fourth generation Octavia range has expanded again with the addition of a new, highly efficient 1.0-litre E-Tech engine. The new unit, which is equipped with a 7-speed DSG gearbox as standard, is the brand's first MHEV or mild hybrid powertrain. At the heart of the E-Tech powertrain is a powerful 48-volt lithium-ion battery and a combined belt-driven starter alternator. A 48 volt system means that the new Octavia can coast with the engine completely switched off for extended periods with the electric motor maintaining power to an essential system like the car power steering. The mild hybrid system can also recover energy during braking and store it in the battery and support the combustion engine by providing it with electric boost. A direct current converter DC to DC converts the voltage from 48 volt battery to the 12 volts required for the vehicle's electrical system. All of which means you don't really notice the car being efficient with a round town consumption of 5.1 litres per 100 kilometres. Uh, like you think you hear a one liter do its thing, that, that, that vocal noise. And when I put my foot down, you will actually feel that. So there is an element of uh, how much noise the car makes. But under normal load, under normal driving load, this car does an incredible job at trundling about the place. Considering the size of the car uh, versus the size of the engine. It's a one liter three cylinder. That, just keep that in your head for a minute. Now, Skoda have done a number of little things to the cars 
over the last few years they've done a good job at making sure the car feels like it's a bigger car than it is it does a good job at feeling like a car that you want to drive that you feel like driving and need to drive so now i'm at traffic lights what's after happening is the car has shut down the engine entirely i'm running entirely now from the batteries um, and it shut the engine down two or three hundred meters ago so it's not like a uh, it's not like a stop start system it's actually shut the engine down on purpose um, and that makes the car feel like you're more electrified than you actually are. So I don't know where I am. I'm somewhere near Tala here. I'm not sure where I'm at coming out here. But I know I have to turn right to go down that way. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Um, very complicated layout of road here, Dublin. Don't know why you've done it so complicatedly. But it's okay. We'll work it out. We'll get there. Um, now, would I say the best thing to do is to buy a one litre petrol in a big car like this? I'm not sure, because there has to be a turbo in it. There's a pony in trap, just broke the traffic lights. He just broke, he just went through a red traffic light in that thing. Uh, this one litre petrol, would I say to buy it? I don't know. I think if you're sticking around city driving a lot, you know, if you're driving around towns and things, you're gonna save a little bit of money because of the MHEV section of this, because of the mild hybrid bit of it, which again has shut the engine down as I come up to those traffic lights. Uh, it shuts it down a long way off, and it actually shuts it down on coast as well. You know, you'd be, you'd be coming down a hill or going along a long flat road, and immediately the engine shut down by the car to save petrol. Now, this is a big car for a one litre. And if you're going to travel around the place as this is such a big car with four occupants in it the whole time or, you know, driving the kids to school, doing the big school runs, all the school bags and the boots and dropping the teenagers off and stuff, I don't know if this is the right car for you. Maybe you should be looking more like a Skoda Enyaq or something that's full electric or even a full diesel car, whatever, you know. I just don't know if these kind of tiny petrol engines are designed for daily family runabout work. Because families do demand a lot from cars, you know, they demand... How can I help? I just got on to her. That's Laura. Uh, Skoda, I'm not sure what she's listening to, but every once in a while she will randomly pop on and go, how can Please I help you? Please say the full address, starting with the city. We're off. To cancel her. I nearly broke the black X up there at the top corner turning her off the other day. Uh, I don't know what it is. Every once in a while, she'll just come on without saying that. You're supposed to be able to say, hi, Laura. Hello, Laura? She doesn't like me now. She's, she's annoyed now because I pressed the black, black button again. Hey, Laura. What would you like to do? Take me to the nearest restaurant. No matter what. Did you mean New Ross, Rasgarog, Rasgarog? <laughs> no, restaurant. Search for restaurant nearby. Yes, do that. Go. Begin. Engage. Please wait. Okay. Please select a POI from the list. North Park. You can see examples of. Search for park nearby. I want the park, I want the restaurant. Please select a POI from the list. <laughs> Voice control in any car doesn't work most of the time. I, I'm going to be dead honest. It doesn't matter who it is. And every time I talk about, uh, you know, lack of, screen, of buttons or something in a car, like a touchscreen or whatever, even in some of the top branded cars, someone goes, well, you know, you have voice control, you can use that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Most of the time, it does not work. If you're very particular in the way you speak to the car, you can make it work. But you have to make the voice control work. Normally, it doesn't work. Hey, Laura. Um, hi, Laura. No. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to call her anymore. I give up. I give up. I just want to set the temperature to 20 degrees. That usually works. Hey, Laura. Not doing yourself any favours here, Laura. She'll come on randomly next time. When I don't want her, she'll come on. But she won't come on when I'm actually just asking for her now. Because I want to set the temperature to 20 degrees. That does work. But I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to press the bleeding button. Forget about it. I'll do it. Anyway, touchscreens 
don't work very well and I actually think I'm starting to believe completely that touchscreens are now dangerous they're just they're just not right it's just not working at all and um, how can I help there she goes again set the temperature to 18 degrees I'd have done it by now sure and she did it but but she only did it on my side it's only on my side <sighs> Anybody who watches channels for a long period of time will know that I absolutely hate when the two temperatures are at different temperatures and no one on the passenger side. <laughs> the temptation now to reach over and change the temperature on the, on the passenger side is just so high at the moment. Anyway, back to the car. Laura there is quite annoying and sometimes can just not understand what you're talking about and it just demonstrated that but realistically you're only use voice control when you really need it when there's no other option you've no choice which there's always a choice uh, touch screens are a little bit dangerous the car itself is fine I do find the suspension very sharp over certain kinds of bumps like that one where you can actually feel it drop off the bump very quickly and like manhole covers and stuff really is jarring inside the car funny enough at higher speeds on motorways and stuff it's fine it works fine no problem it's very quiet very competent very composed ride at higher speeds it's the lower speed ride that actually is a little bit annoying in it thank you very much for joining me um hopefully you've hit the subscribe button if you wouldn't mind doing that there is a list of links down below if you want to you want to support the channel in some way it'd be really good if you do that you can become a patron or, or use PayPal or channel memberships to do something behind the scenes if you want. Um, I really appreciate that, of course. It is a tough old time these days to make money at anything, to be honest with you. But it's, it's okay. We're doing okay. If you can't afford it, don't do it. That's my way every single time. Uh, the free thing for both of us to do is for you to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notifications. That works. That doesn't cost you anything. And YouTube like that. It's always nice. YouTube like you them things when you do that. Uh, but anyway, thanks for joining me today. You'll find me on all the various platforms, including TikTok, uh, Instagram, Twitter to a lesser degree, the odd time Facebook. I don't like Facebook much anymore. It's a negative space for me. Uh, but it's uh, I, I'm pretty much everywhere. If you have a question, you can ask it on one of those platforms, and I'll try to get back to you as best I can. Uh, keep yourself safe for the next few weeks. Hopefully we'll get by all this lovely lockdown stuff and we'll move on with some other sort of interesting thing to do with life instead of just sitting around looking at a wall. Uh, it's been fun so far. Thank you again for joining me and viewing this video. And until the next time, I will see you on the far side.